Welcome. On behalf of the National Transit Institute, I thank you for participating in the Methods of Forecasting Demand and Quantifying Need for Rural Passenger Transportation Final Workbook CCRP Report 161 webinar. The National Transit Institute develops, promotes, and delivers training and education programs for the public transit industry in the United States. We are pleased to have Frank Spielberg, A.T. Stoddard, and Corey Pitts as our presenters. Mr. Corey Pitts is a transportation planner with Van Ass Hangen Bruslin. He developed many of the materials used in the state level training seminars for the rural transit need and demand forecasting methods presented in TCRP Report 161 and was the instructor for several modules at the training sessions. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to switch screens and I'm actually going to show you the spreadsheet tool. So when it first opens up, the first thing you'll see is uh, the instructions and kind of introduction screen. Uh, it'll have uh, a couple instructions on how to, to briefly use it. There are more detailed instructions in the workbook as part of Appendix B. They'll walk you through, I mean, exactly step by step. There are figures that show you which buttons to hit, uh, where to go out for data sources, and there are examples in the workbook. So on the instruction screen, you'll see a couple different keys. Uh, there's a key where you can print reports. So as you do these analyses, if you want to actually print out the results so that you have a hard copy uh, to show either your elected officials or your director, uh, you can use that feature. Uh, there's uh, a clear forms uh, button which allows you to just wipe the spreadsheet completely clean after you've done your analysis and you want a clean version to start over with as well as there's a button to clear the peer data, which is a separate tab towards the end of the spreadsheet. And you'll also notice that as part of the spreadsheet, it has macros that are built into it. The macros are really only to be able to use the buttons. In order to just do the analyses, you don't need to activate the macros. And what we found through doing some of the workshops is due to the various security settings that each agency sets up in their, their computers, some will allow the macros to be enabled and some won't. Uh, so just because you can't get the macros to enable doesn't mean the spreadsheet is completely useless. You can still use the spreadsheet. Uh, the macros just allow you to be able to use the buttons that I just spoke of. But there are instructions on how to use the macros on the very last tab highlighted in blue called macro instructions, uh, as well as there are some instructions in the workbook. So the, the spreadsheet tool is really designed uh, to kind of assist in doing the calculations that the workbook that AT uh, briefly discussed. All you need to do is to, to collect the data, uh, which the workbook highlights, you know, which sources to go out and collect for your specific community, and then you can enter the data in here, and you don't need to do the actual arithmetic uh, that's part of the formula as this will produce the results for you. It does require you to go out and collect the data, so it's not going to do all the steps for you, uh, but it will do the arithmetic for you. So I'm going to walk through the various tabs. So the first tab is the analysis setup. At the very top, you can uh, type in you know, what area you're studying, what's the type of this analysis that you're doing, and, and any additional description that you may want to add. And then what you'll notice is that below are the different methodologies that AT just talked about. So you have uh, need, as in number of persons, uh, need in number of trips, or the mobility gap, uh, demand from a program standpoint. And when you select uh, demand for program, it will ask you how many programs you'd like to analyze. So all the way from one, all the way up to 25 different programs. Uh, demand for non-program trips. Uh, general public rural passenger transportation, uh, demand for small city fixed routes, and then demand for uh, commuter by transit to an urban center. So I'm going to show just how the, the spreadsheet works from a, a need for the number of persons, and then I'll also show you kind of what happens when you check some of the other boxes. So I'll select the first box, and then I'll go to the input tab, and what you'll notice Right now we're fairly zoomed in so that you can see the actual text, but it only white uh, turns the cells white that I need to enter information to. All the other cells are grayed out, so you know just which cells you need to enter information in. So if I put in information in this first one, we'll just 
put some CAN numbers in. And it's doing some of the other calculations for you. So as part of some of the calculations, you just want households. Other calculations, you want to derive the number of persons. And this will do those calculations for you. So the sources of the data that you'll pull these from are in the ACS. The workbook walks you around which specific data set within the ACS you need to collect. It gives you the table number. You can enter in that information. The workbook also walks you through you know, what are the steps for creating your geography and then how to actually get the data and download it. So it, it, it can come out in a, a number of different formats, but that's where the, the, the source of the data should originate is typically the ACS. There are uh, additional sources of data that can be out there. Uh, you know, if your MPO or your, your planning agency has data that you feel is better than what you could get out of the census, uh, feel free to use that as well, but just make sure it fits into whatever the population that the spreadsheet is asking for. So then once you've entered in the information, you can click on the output page and it's produced the result using the formula that AT discussed. So uh, based on the, the numbers I've put in, 7,200 7, people uh, need trips based on those figures. So similarly, you know, if we wanted to do an analysis uh, for need based on the number of trips or the mobility gap, once I've checked that, it still pulls off of uh, households with no vehicles, but then it also activates the mobility gap tab, which comes from that spreadsheet that AT talked about where it computed off of the Nas National Household Travel Survey. So you'd go through and select your state, and it would pull uh, the mobility gap for your census region based on the state that you've inputted. So I've inputted Virginia. It's going to pull that census region's mobility gap and then produce results. So it'll tell you the number of households. It would show you what the mobility gap for the census region is, which for Virginia it's 1.3. And then it's going to show you the daily one-way passenger trips as well as the annual one-way passenger trips. And that's often of an assumption of 300 days per year. So using the spreadsheet, you can uh, do all the different uh, methodologies. You just activate it by checking the box, and then it will go through and activate the cells that you need to. The spreadsheet also, for some of the inputs, will tell you which American Community Survey table number you need to pull from. So for, let's say, general public world non-program demand, for population age 60 plus, you're going to be searching for table number B01001. Now, as I mentioned, the workbook walks you through all the steps of getting to the, the American Community Survey website, which links to click on, how to enter the table number, develop your geography. As you'll see also in the, the lower part of the spreadsheet, there is a link built into that. We just have to preface that with, you know, Links to websites update periodically and change. Um, I, I'm going to assume from this point forward that the census website, census.gov, will probably be fairly steady, but the links to Fact Finder and some of these other census links that are kind of get you to further into the, the census website may change moving forward. But uh, the table numbers should be constant. Those go are used from year to year unless that particular uh, population isn't continued forward. Um, one of the, the last features of the spreadsheet is the peer data worksheet. So just like the other methodologies where you can enter in uh, the various inputs, it will do all the math for you. So you can enter in uh, up to a number of peer institutions, uh, putting in the population area. And as you put it in and, and fill in the, the rest of the spreadsheet, it'll populate the areas down below. So it'll, it'll, it'll compute the trips per capita for the maximum, the average, the median, the minimum, trips per vehicle mile, trips per vehicle hour, and then you just need to enter in into the yellow cells those attributes that pertain to your system, and then it'll compute the ranges that are part of the peer analysis. So that's pretty much the spreadsheet. 
Uh, we felt that it was a, a good way to allow the user to, to pull the data and put it into the spreadsheet, and it's kind of a simple way to produce the results. Uh, you don't need to go through some of the long steps, especially with the uh, commuters to urban centers, which has a lot of factors and, and a little bit more arithmetic to it. This allows you to just plug in the values and go with them.